Hi guys, Billy back and this time we are looking at the Nightwalker 1-6 scale figure by Present Toys aka Lou Bloom from the Nightcrawler movie from about 2014, 2015 we'll say. Now I didn't see this film when it first came out. I thought it was just a typical Stalker movie and I had no idea what it was really about. I just assumed, ah, Stalker film, I get it, I've seen that film a million times. However, when I actually watched the movie I was really surprised because I haven't really seen a character like this guy in any movie before. It's, it's really one of those sort of unique characters and unique times when an actor has sort of stepped forth and sort of become someone else. And it, it, honestly, it really is a good movie. Never seen a character like Lou Bloom before. Pretty sure we'll probably see a few more like him. I believe he's just like this guy with borderline personality disorder and how that was his, like a weakness and he kind of turns it into a strength and he's sort of, he's horrible, but you also kind of admire his sort of tenacity, but also at the same time, he's horrible to watch. It's a, it's a very good film. So if you don't get a chance, watch it. But as it is, let's actually have a look at the figure itself because that's what you've come here for. Now it says Nightwalker on the front, but it is Nightcrawler the movie. There's a nice picture of Lou Bloom in there with one six scale collectible figure in the lens image there. Nice touch and sort of like a movie reel with some blood. Again, it makes it look like he's like a psychopath, like a Hannibal, Hannibal Lecter or something like that. He's not, he really, like I said, unique character in a movie. Never quite seen one before. Not, never quite seen one since either. And again, at the bottom, we've got some more movie reels. On the side, just the Present Toys logo. And then on the back, we've got all our warnings and another movie still of the character himself. It warns you about humidity, so I have a funny feeling that the jacket, even though people have said it's possibly leather because Present Toys did one for Indiana Jones. I've seen the figure already. It's pleather. And just like all good unlicensed one six scale figures, there is a spelling error, thank God. Not for children under three, I wouldn't give this to anyone less than 14 years of age. I mean, while they're watching the film to begin with at three, come on, do some pairing. But other than that, that's it guys. And then inside there's just some foam packaging, the figure and all the accessories, which I've already taken out of the box because I was really curious and wanted to have a look. So let's just get everything out here and we're gonna do that thing. Ah, oh, fuck it, I'm just gonna take it out. Yeah, there we go, nailed it. Anyway, here's just everything out of the box. You can see the figure itself here. He's got this night crawler stand. He's got four extra hands. He comes with a small camcorder, a big camcorder, and a watch. He also comes with these little sunny glasses. I'm gonna show these first because we're not gonna look at these very much. Because they just, I, I can't get them to fit on his head. They just fall off every single time. They're just, it's crap. They don't fit on. There's no arm pieces here that wrap around the head properly. There's no elastic that goes around the head or anything to hold them on. I can't get them to fit on. Maybe mine is just a dodgy one, but still, if you're going to include something like this and it's supposed to fit on the head, make sure there's some way that it does because mine will not. I saw Big Breeders review and he managed to fit them on, but these things will not stay on no matter what I do. But as you can see, the lens are pretty clear. You can see through them. You can actually see kind of, no, it's a little bit frosty, but Still, you can just about see them, and I wanted to put these on because the head sculpt does have its slight niggling problems, and I thought these glasses would help with negating some of those inaccuracies, but as it is, they, these just doesn't fit on. So uh, yeah, that's the first epic fail of this. But coming in, we can see the hands, and they're very nicely painted, very nicely sculpted, and they are actually kind of fitting for the figure himself because they do fit onto these cameras pretty well. And you can get these to wrap around and actually fit onto these like grips for the cameras so that is a nice touch actually very well made and they actually do fit the accessories and even the battery on the back falls off because you just heard that fall off while we're here let's have a look at the actual camera itself this is really nice actually there's lots of nice little details in the side here it's a bit clean and black plastic looking i would have liked a few more sort of different variances maybe the dials were a bit more glossy and things like that but as it is, it still looks pretty good. The lens viewer moves up and down, which is really good. So you can have him looking into it. The microphone is just plastic. It would have been nice to have a bit of foam on there. And there's no real lens. It's just black gloss painted on the end there. But overall, it's a pretty nice accessory. And he'll look good when he's holding it. Oh, and before I forget, this hinge opens up 
You can actually open the screen here, which is really, really good. And while actually trying to put this into his hand, it fell and the two aerials snapped off. Very easily done. Yeah, it's just a bit naff the way it's just sort of been glued on there and then they're easily snappable. Here's another little letdown is this guy, he's just plain black matte plastic. There's nothing to him. There's nothing on the screen. There's no lens in there or anything. It is just sort of molded plastic. Feels a little bit Marvel Legendsy. Once it's in his hand, it will look good enough, but honestly, I think they could have done a little bit more with that. And then he comes with this little gold watch and it's very nice. It's got like a gloss lens in there. So where this does have a lens in it, the camera doesn't, which is a bit of a weird shame because it proves they can do it. I don't know, it might work for this guy actually because he would probably have a cheap fake sort of tacky watch you know but it'll do the job and mostly it'll be underneath his sort of coat here so you barely see this but it'll be a nice detail that you know about okay so coming in and looking at the figure itself i can see that there is enough of a sort of like a similarity to jake gyllenhaal as lou bloom but there are a few errors that this seems to have i don't know if you can see it in the actual light here sort of reflects into the eyes and it's, it's nice and glossy but one of these is just a little bit wonky just so fractionally but when you actually see it you can't unsee it and that's why i wanted the glasses to cover up sort of imperfections like that but you can see they've kind of done a good job with the uh, paint flecking and the shading and sort of like the indentations around the head where we sort of got sunken in cheeks because jake Gyllenhaal did lose some weight to represent this character because he's a bit gaunt and a bit sort of like emaciated and that was part of the character you know this is a guy who eats to survive you know he doesn't eat because he likes food he eats because it's what he thinks humans do <laughs> you know he's that kind of a character he monic sort of mimics people he sort of nods along when he thinks he's got another hack to figure out humans you know he's like guy i've got it yeah okay yeah but really he's just that borderline personality disorder really is sort of like um him just trying to connect and understand humans and he can't fully understand but uh yeah it doesn't mean he's not an alien don't think anything like that but he's just got just just some weird quirks about him and the sculpting of the hair is pretty nice and there is some shade and sort of level of detail in there dark brown light brown that kind of thing but honestly yeah it does look enough like sort of like a gaunt jake chillenhall that it works for the character but i think the uh, glasses would have worked so much better if they'd have been able to stay on him because then I could actually put them on. Come on, get on there, you stupid sunglasses. But yeah, they just fall off every single time. So mine, just trash. But then coming down and looking at the actual shirt and the jacket, very well made. The collars, again, they're really starting to nail shirt collars. For years, they couldn't get them right. But now they're managing to like thin them out and get them really sort of creased in and starched in. and. They're looking a lot better and he did wear slightly overclothed, oversized clothing that was to help make him look even more gaunt and thin and for pulling down the shirt and everything you can see the bottom of the neck piece joint there so we want to keep fucking with that and bring it up but looking at the jacket very nicely made quite thin the pockets are real i really like these hem lines and these collars around the uh, jacket piece here nice and stretchy they are elasticated which is really good and overall it does look great but you know what i'm gonna say enjoy it while it lasts people enjoy it while it lasts but again very nicely made no weathering or anything but this guy wasn't really a you know he wasn't a dirty guy but then coming down you can see the trousers are just like cheap nylon trousers which is actually very accurate to the character so these work and then he has sort of like really plain boring crap shoes which actually again works for the character and then you can see like they've added an extra foot peg down here but because they made it black, it looks a little bit more like socks. And they've also included a little bit of tread on the bottom of the feet. Now the articulation is very, very good on this figure, mostly because it, it's kind of a one six scale body in loose baggy clothing. So, you know, you can get his head down that far, look up about that much. He has great butterfly movement in the shoulders. The arms can go up really high. Double bend in the elbows. There is a bicep swivel. His hands are on wrist pegs because they can move all the way around and up and down. Torso, not so much. I think the body the present toys use a lot of the time has a little bit of restriction in the torso, but he can lean back really, really far. He's got good rocking to the sides. He can van down really, really well. There is a thigh swivel. The legs can go up really, really high, seriously. There is a double bend in the knees. 
and the ankles are on ball joints so they can swivel around and actually get really good articulation as well. Okay, so overall, what do I think of the figure? Well, in terms of all the Lou Bloom figures we've had before, this is clearly the best one, mostly because it's the only one. While the head sculpt is close enough to Lou Bloom in the movie, it's still mildly inaccurate enough for I can understand people being turned off by it. Not only that, but that big old pleather coat just sends shivers down my spine. Clothing wise, very, very nice. It was really hard to screw this up in terms of clothing, simply because he wears cheap nylon baggy trousers, cheap crappy shoes, a leather jacket, and a really simple undignified shirt. That is really all you need to worry about in terms of clothing, which meant they did have enough time, I think, to focus on other aspects of the figure, namely the head sculpt, the accessories, and especially the glasses. And the glasses just will not fit on there, and I hate it. If you're gonna give us something like that as an accessory, you've got to put the QC in to make sure that it fits well. The small camera he comes with, plastic fantastic, not very good. It will work with the figure, but it feels like it's a, an addition, like a superfluous add-on that they didn't really think about. Again, the base is pretty good, but again, it's just a sticker on a normal oval base we've seen a million times over from many, many third-party companies. But it, it does do the figure semi-justice, and they didn't dare call it Nightwalker on the base. They actually gave him the name Nightcrawler on there. But overall, it, it's okay. I'm not going to be singing its praises, and I don't blame anybody for giving this one a swerve. It looks enough like the character for me to be happy to have it on the shelf, but I can totally understand why other people will just go, it's not accurate enough, and then just move on. But I don't think we're ever going to see a Lou Bloom figure ever again. In terms of other 1-6 scale representations of Lou Bloom, this is your own choice. And it's entirely down to you whether you think it's accurate enough to have it on your shelf, or it's inaccurate enough for you to give it a complete swerve. And I don't blame anyone for choosing either. Okay guys, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you do me a favor now, if you can get the fuck out of my cave. I think I have only one more figure that's been shipped but hasn't arrived yet. Just had a notification that Blitzway are taking the money for the fourth 1-6 scale Blitzway Hunters. So that is the next figure that I am super super looking forward to if he's the same quality as the first three releases i'm going to lose my mind thanks a lot guys bye bye